Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. What a great day to be from Texas. Uh, first, my Longhorns came back and won in, uh, won in overtime. And then uh, all three Texas champions, the Charlo Brothers and Brandon Figueroa, go three for three with two knockouts. Uh, and Jamal may have been the most impressive, even though his fight went the distance. Uh, really great day uh, for for. Texas and Texas boxing. Great day to be from the Republic of Texas, the Great Republic. Um, let's get into it. In the main event, uh, well, I don't know how you want to call it. He was having success, you know, walking Jamal Charlo, Jamal Charlo down, applying pressure, having success with the jab. Look, Jamal is the better athlete. Um, you know, he's the more skilled fighter. But R Rosario, I, I don't think either fighter was fighting exceptionally well. And I'll get into that. First, Rosario was not cutting off the ring well. He was just kind of following Jamal around. Um, but Jamel kind of cooperated. Like, Jamel hung out on the ropes a lot. And when he did, Jason Rosario did good work. If, if, if I was – to me, this was kind of like the Cotto versus Margarito fight without the loaded gloves. So the second fight, right? We're called to stay away. Cotto could outbox him all day. Just don't, 
don't get caught up in the ropes. If you don't get caught up in the ropes, you win the fight. And, and you know, he was kind of cooperating where, he, where he'd hang out in the ropes and, and Jason Rosario would have success, you know, and landing big power shots and just outworking them and, and outland them while they were on the ropes. Um, so I, I, I think Rosario could have done a better job of cutting off the ring at times, but he didn't have to because Rosario, uh, because Charlo kind of cooperated. And, and I think Charlo, um, needs to not do that. Uh, you know, I kind of look at Jamel Charlo, and this is going to be an interesting analogy, like like the Los Angeles Lakers. You know, there's a ton of talent there. You know, the, but I don't know that he's figured out exactly what he is yet, right? Like, you watch the Lakers, and, and they won today. They're going to the finals, and they could win because they're that talented. Um, But, like, who's their starting center for the most part, right? It, it, it's Howard. It's Javel. It, it, they have a, you know, a bunch of guys they just throw out there. Anthony Davis is the four. Anthony Davis will score 32 points one day, and the next day take four shots. It's like, I, you know, uh, Rondo will handle the point for three quarters, you know, um, and, and then LeBron will take the ball, and the others will just get stuck. It's like, well, who, who handles the ball, right? Like, there's no rhyme or reason for what happens. It's just, you know, but they're so talented that they get through the day. Um, I kind of see that with Jamel Charlo, where he's so talented and he can do so many things that he can get through the day, even at this level. But I mean, there's going to be there's going to come a time um, if the Heat if the Heat do beat the Celtics, and that's not a guarantee. Like I'm going to pick the Heat to beat the Lakers because the Heat know exactly what they are. They, they play the same way every game, um, and, and they all have defined roles and they have a very deep bench, right? They know exactly how they what they who they are, what they do, and what they're good at. The Lakers don't, right? So for that reason, I'm going to pick the Heat. Uh, um. With Jamel Charlo, I feel it's kind of, kind of like the same thing. Like, he's so talented and he's so good and he's so skilled in what he does. But he doesn't like, – I feel like the game plan isn't there. Like, what is he? Is, is he a boxer? Is he a mover? Is he a boxer puncher like his brother? It's something different every fight, which is okay. But, like, you have to master something. And I see him – like, if he fought Laura, let's say, I, I think Laura outboxes him. If he fought Castano, he could probably beat Castano, but it's going to be way tougher than it has to be because they're going to slug it out in the middle. You know, if, if, if Hurd was still good, does you know does Lubin outbox him? I I don't know because he's not a pure boxer. I mean, he can be. It seems like at times, but that's not what he sticks to, right? And, and if you are a pure boxer, you got to stay off the ropes. You got to stay off the ropes, and he, he didn't do that. So I don't really know what Jamel is at this point. He's hittable. But he's got a ton of talent. He's got a good jab. He's got he throws really quick combinations. He's highly athletic. He he can make you miss at times. He can do a lot of really good things. But I don't know what his identity as a fighter is. Um, but look, right now he's got three belts. He's the lineal champion at 154. He's the junior middleweight champion of the world. So he's got this ball without really having a true identity in the ring. Let's get to his brother. A lot. This fight definitely showed us a lot. It, it, the talent and the skills and every, the power. Jamal Chol may be able to beat everyone at 160. Uh, for the fight that we thought with Canelo, um, which, uh, you know, uh, originally a lot of people thought, and then after the uh, Ken and Adams fight and the um, Korba fight, the Korba fight was first and then the Ken and Adams fight, people were like, like ah, no, he certainly can't beat Canelo. The Hogan fight was a step in the right direction, and this was a masterful performance. I, I mean, um, he got this fight. Um, Darvachenko got this fight because he clearly beat Triple G and got robbed blind, right? So this is a guy who beat Triple G, and now he steps in with Charlo, right? And Charlo handles him. Now, Darvachenko had moments. Darvachenko had moments where he got into the inside, and I, I think, from what I saw, that was because Jamal stopped firing off the jab. When Jamal fired the jab, he controlled him. He controlled the fight when he kept the jab in his when he, when he kept his hand in his pocket, and he tried to just throw right hands or let 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 Derevchenko on the inside. Derevchenko hurt him, 
Derek Tango did good work on the inside, but it, it, those were like unforced errors as I saw it. You know, um, gosh, is, is Jamal Charlo good? Um, so like when Jamal Charlo was firing off his, his jab is so powerful. It's, it's such a it's such a shotgun stick. Like it's the best jab in the middleweight division, and that includes uh, Triple G, which. I mean, can they make that fight? But Triple uh, Jamal Charlo just destroyed a guy who who beat Triple G. Like, and I know Triple, and I know Devin Tiger didn't get the decision. But we all watched the fight. We know what happened. There's not a person in the world who thinks Triple G won that fight. Um, the judges who scored it for Triple G don't think Triple G won the fight. I mean, come on, that that was that was silly goosey stuff. But um, Charlo. Look complete, like especially when he was firing off that jab. If he if he works off that jab, he could beat anyone in this division. I'm not saying he can beat Canelo, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, Charles' power is there; his combinations are there. Uh, he he knows when to pick his power shots really well, um, especially when he's working everything off the jab. Jamel's going to be a really, really, really tough out. Um, that was the main event of the first half right before the intermission uh in the lead up to that fight division here's my concern i don't know that he's a 122 pounder anymore um he looked good i don't have his own don't take his he, he, he looked good and maybe it was being in the bubble maybe being in the bubble drained him trying to make weight uh but he looked a, a step slower than it usually did his footwork didn't look as pretty as it usually does um and he there wasn't as much head movement and slipping punches as there usually is right he looked a bit slow. And he's a kid, right? He's 22. So he's a kid, 23. He's a kid. So he shouldn't be fatiguing like that. I'm just thinking, you know, I, I talked to him uh, before the Chacon fight last August when he fought um, in the Valley, in the Rio Grand Valley. And he said then it, it was, a, it was tough. It, it was a struggle to make 122. Now he's still drunk, he's maturing. His body is still growing and getting bigger. I don't know if this is the right weight class for him. And he can dumb. I said this guy can go all the way up over time, over time. Will can blossom into a lightweight. So I, I don't think going a featherweight, going to 126 is going to be an issue, right? But he can really dominate 122, and, and there's a lot of big fights. So I understand that he wants to stay there, but just like Hooker going to 147, like, look, your time at the 122 might be over. Okay, um, it might be in his best interest to go to 126. I don't know if he has to. You know, maybe give it one more camp and see if the weight comes off easier when you're not in the bubble seat. You show, but he looked. Did he look a little slower to you guys? He looked just a step slower. You know. His, his 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 hand speed, which is all again, his kid's not defensively put out Whitaker. He didn't have the speed, uh, the hand speed of Amir Khan or, or anything like that. Um, but for for what he is, right? Um, he got hit more than he he, he should, right? Because he he he's like he's not a defensive wizard, but he moves his head off center and makes you miss like that. And, and he's always going to eat shots because the way he fights. That's not what I'm not saying. He's a defensive wizard. I'm saying he, he, he was, he just looked slower to me a little bit. Right. And I, I think that has to do with, he's getting bigger and he can't make the weight anymore. Um, 
but he dominated the fight. He, he got the 10th round stoppage. He goes to 18-0 and 1. Um, and he's, look, he, if he continues to make the weight class, he's pretty close to unbeatable at this weight class. I, I, I want to see him fight one of the top two or three or four names in the weight class. Um, I, I'm uh, Fulton is, is, is tied up. You know, I would like to see him fight Roman, but, he, you know, he or Neary, fight Neary. And I think he beats both those guys. If I, you know, if I would Neary, it would be fantastic. But, I mean, and, and I mean, do you guys agree? Do you think, am I, am I making too big of a deal? Or, or do you guys think I figure I may, may be the best guy in weight class? Do you think he beats Neary like I do? Do you think he beats Ramon like I do? Uh, let me know what y'all think. Uh, leave your thoughts, comments, below. But anyway, it was a great day to be from Texas. Uh, 3-0, and plus the Texas Longhorns got a win. It was a great day. Uh, the eyes of, of Texas are, are smiling down on us. Um, remember to like and subscribe. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share this on all forms of social media. Uh, find me at 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. You can find my article at fightpost.uk, uh, which is a great website. Um, it covers both boxing and UFC. And as well, you can uh, find me. We should have a show probably tomorrow on MCR Podcast um, on YouTube. From Texas to the world, thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.